वेलकम स्टूडेंट्स वंस अगेन इन आर प्रीवियस लेक्चर वी हैव स्टडीड अबाउट व्हाट इज डिफरेंशिएशन सम फंडामेंटल रूल्स ऑफ डिफरेंशिएशन वेरियस मेथड्स टू डिफरेंशिएट फंक्शंस एंड वी आल्सो सॉल्व्ड सम आईआईटी प्रॉब्लम्स इन दिस लेक्चर वी आर गोइंग टू इंट्रोड्यूस द कांसेप्ट ऑफ हायर ऑर्डर डेरिवेटिव्स हाउ टू कैलकुलेट देम व्हाट इज द सिग्निफिकेंस एंड देयर एप्लीकेशंस आल्सो इन दिस लेक्चर वी आर गोइंग टू सी हाउ डिफरेंशिएशन इज यूज्ड इन सीरीज एक्सपेंशन so let's quickly begin this lecture so the first part of this lecture is differentiation of one function with respect to another function till now we have seen the differentiation of a function with respect to an independent variable but let's now study the differentiation of one function with respect to another function both these functions have the same independent variable so let us say that y is a function of x such that y equal to f of x let us say that z is another function of x such that z equal to g of x now dy by dx would be equal to f dash x and dz by dx would be equal to g dash x now we have to find the differentiation of one function with respect to another that is we have to find out dy by dz or we have to differentiate fx with respect to the function z so dy by dz is equal to f dash x divided by g dash x that is we divide this equation by this equation so dy by dz is equal to f dash x by g dash x here f dash x by g dash x is the differentiation of fx with respect to another function gx let's try to see an example to understand this concept differentiate tan inverse x with respect to 1 minus x by 1 plus x so here we have to differentiate the function tan inverse x not with respect to x but with respect to the function 1 minus x divided by 1 plus x so let's see the solution of this let us say that y is equal to tan inverse x and z is equal to 1 minus x by 1 plus x here y equal to tan inverse x is one function and z equal to 1 minus x by 1 plus x is another function and we have to differentiate tan inverse x with respect to this function the dy by dx would be equal to 1 by 1 plus x square as the differential coefficient of tan inverse x is 1 by 1 plus x square now dz by dx would be the differentiation of this function and this is equal to 1 plus x into minus 1 minus 1 minus x whole divided by 1 plus x whole square here we use the quotient rule and this is equal to minus 2 by 1 plus x whole square so dz by dx is equal to minus 2 by 1 plus x whole square now we have to calculate the value of dy by dz and we see that dy by dz can be written as equal to dy by dx divided by dz by dx so dy by dz is equal to 1 by 1 plus x square whole divided by minus 2 by 1 plus x whole square which is equal to 1 plus x whole square divided by minus 2 1 plus x square when we differentiate tan inverse x with respect to 1 minus x by 1 plus x we get this following result now let's see another method that is the method of substitution now what is the method of substitution in this method we replace or substitute x by some different function so as to reduce the complex expression to a simpler one which can be easily differentiated so in this method what we do is we replace or substitute x by some different function of some other variable why we do this this is done to reduce the complex expression to a simpler one and which could be easily differentiated thus it reduces our efforts and make the expression simpler and easy to differentiate So let's see an example. Let y is equal to cot inverse of under root of one plus x divided by one minus x. This whole expression is under the root. Find dy by dx at the point x equal to root three by two. So in this problem, we have been given y equal to cot inverse of under root of one plus x by one minus x, and we have to calculate the derivative at the point x equal to root three by two. So let's see how to use the method of substitution in this problem. So let's substitute x equal to cos two theta. 
Now why we have substituted x by cos 2 theta? This will become more clear when we further look at the solution of this. So we put this value of x in the expression for y to get y equal to cot inverse of under root of 1 plus cos 2 theta divided by 1 minus cos 2 theta. Now from the basic trigonometric identity we see that 1 plus cos 2 theta is equal to 2 times cos square theta and 1 minus cos 2 theta is equal to 2 times sin square theta. So when we put this value of 1 plus cos 2 theta here and 1 minus cos 2 theta here we get the expression as y equal to cot inverse of under root of cos square theta by sin square theta. Now cos square theta by sin square theta is nothing but equal to cot square theta and under root of cot square theta is cot theta. So y is equal to cot inverse of cot theta. Now cot inverse of cot theta is nothing but equal to theta. So y is equal to theta. But we also know that x is equal to cos 2 theta. So theta would be equal to 1 by 2 cos inverse x. Thus dy by dx is equal to 1 by 2 into minus 1 divided by under root of 1 minus x square. Thus we get the expression for dy by dx. Now we have to find dy by dx at the point x equal to root 3 by 2. So dy by dx is equal to minus 1 by 2 into 1 by under root of 1 minus 3 by 4 and that is equal to minus 1. Thus the value of dy by dx at the point x equal to root 3 by 2 is equal to minus 1. So we see that through the method of substitution the problem became quite easy and the function became very much easy to differentiate. Now for some of the standard forms I am going to give you some tips that is so if we have any function of the form of under root of a square minus x square then, then substitute x equal to a sin theta. Similarly if we have any function of the form a square plus x square then substitute x equal to a tan theta and if we have any function of the form 1 plus x divided by 1 minus x then substitute x equal to cos of 2 theta. So these are the substitutions which we can make and reduce the complex form of function to a very simpler one which becomes very much easy to differentiate. Now let's come to the next part of this lecture that is higher order derivatives. Till now we have seen what is dy by dx. Now the derivative of dy by dx with respect to x is called the second derivative of y with respect to x and it is denoted by d square y by dx square. So till now we have differentiated y equal to fx with respect to x. Now we are going to look at the derivative of dy by dx with respect to x and this is nothing but the second derivative of y with respect to x that is we are differentiating the function y equal to fx two times and it is denoted by d square y by dx square. Similarly the derivative of d square y by dx square with respect to x is called as the third derivative and so on. It is denoted by d cube y by dx cube. Thus d by dx of dy by dx is equal to d square y by dx square. So it means that the second derivative is the twice differentiation of y equal to fx with respect to x. The third derivative is the thrice differentiation of y equal to fx with respect to x and so on. Now why are we so interested in finding the higher order derivatives? The higher order derivatives have their own applications. d square y by dx square helps us to find out the nature of curves that is whether they are concave or convex. Also this helps us in finding out the point of inflection. Also d square y by dx square is a test for finding out whether a point represents a maximum value or a minimum value. So these higher order derivatives have their own applications which we are going to study in the coming lectures. But as for now let's concentrate on finding how to actually calculate d square y by dx square or d cube y by dx cube. Let's see a solved example. y is equal to x square plus ln of tan x plus e to the power of x. Find d square y by dx square at the point x equal to pi by 4. So in this problem we have been given the function y equal to x square plus ln of tan x plus e to the power of x and we have to calculate the value of d square y by dx square at the point x equal to pi by 4. So let's see the solution of this. 
given that y is equal to x square plus ln of tan x plus e to the power of x. So, so we differentiate this function with respect to x and get dy by dx equal to y dash equal to 2x plus 6 square x by tan x plus e to the power of x. This is because the differential coefficient of ln x is 1 by x and the differential coefficient of tan x is 6 square x. Now y dash that is the first derivative of fx is 2x plus x square x divided by tan x plus e to the power of x. Now this could be further reduced to 2 times cos x 2x. Thus y dash x is equal to 2x plus 2 times cos x 2x plus e to the power of x. Now we have to calculate t square y by dx square. That is the double differentiation of y equal to fx. So we again differentiate it and get y double dash equal to d by dx of this expression. When we again differentiate this expression we get 2 plus 2 times minus cos x 2x into cot 2x into 2 plus e to the power of x. This is because the differentiation of this is 2. Differentiation of cos x 2x is minus cos x 2x into cot 2x into 2 and the differentiation of e to the power of x is the same e to the power of x. Thus we see that y double dash is equal to 2 minus 4 times cos x 2x into cot 2x plus e to the power of x. Now we have to find its value at the point x equal to pi by 4. So substituting x equal to pi by 4 we get y double dash equal to 2 minus this term becomes 0 plus e to the power of pi by 4. Thus y double dash or d square y by dx square is equal to 2 plus e to the power of pi by 4. In the previous lecture we have seen what is a parametric function and we have learned how to differentiate a parametric function. Now we are going to see how to find the second derivative of a parametric function. Now let us say that y is equal to f of t and x is equal to g of t. Your y and x are expressed in terms of independent variable that is t. So dy by dx would be equal to f dash t divided by g dash t. This we have seen in the previous lecture. Now we have to find the second derivative. So d square y by dx square is equal to d by dx of dy by dx or is equal to d by dx of f dash t divided by g dash t. So first of all we find the value of dy by dx and we again try to differentiate this value with respect to x to get the second derivative of any parametric function. I know this sounds a bit complicated but let's see an example to understand it more clearly. Let y is equal to cos t and x is equal to e to the power of t. Now y and x are expressed in terms of t. Find d square y by dx square. So here this is a parametric function and we have to calculate the second derivative with respect to x. So we write y equal to cos t and x equal to e to the power of t. Now we differentiate y with respect to t to get dy by dt equal to minus sin t and we differentiate x with respect to t. So dx by dt would be equal to e to the power of t. Now we know that dy by dx would be equal to dy by dt divided by dx by dt. So dy by dx is equal to minus of sin t divided by e to the power of t. Or we can write it as equal to minus of sin t into e to the power of minus t. Now we have calculated dy by dx. Now to calculate the second derivative we again differentiate dy by dx with respect to x. So we differentiate minus of sin t into e to the power of minus t with respect to x. So we get as e to the power of minus t into the differential of this expression that is minus cos t into dt by dx plus we write this expression as it is and differentiate e to the power of minus t with respect to x to get e to the power of minus t into minus 1 into dt by dx. We get dt by dx because we are differentiating t with respect to x. So we take e to the power of minus t and dt by dx common and get e to the power of minus t into dt by dx into sin t minus cos t. So d square y by dx square is equal to e to the power of minus t into dt by dx into sin t minus cos t. But we also know the value of dt by dx. This is equal to e to the power of minus t. So we substitute the value dt by dx equal to e to the power of minus t here to get d square y by dx square equal to 
e to the power of minus 2t into sin t minus cos t. Thus, the second derivative of the parametric function y equal to cos t and x equal to e to the power t is equal to e to the power of minus 2t into sin t minus cos t. Thus, to find the second derivative of any parametric function, we first find the value of dy by dx and then we try to differentiate it again with respect to x to find the second derivative of any parametric function. Now students, let's try to solve an IIT problem which is based on higher order derivatives. This problem appeared in 1983 and it says that if a plus bx into e to the power of y by x is equal to x, then prove that x cube into d square y by dx square is equal to x times dy by dx minus y whole square. Now we have been given an equation a plus bx into e to the power of y by x equal to x and we have to prove this identity that is x cube into d square y by dx square equal to x times dy by dx minus y whole square. So let's check out the solution of this. Given that a plus bx into e to the power of y by x is equal to x. Now taking log on both sides we get y equal to x into log of x by a plus bx. Or we can further write it as x times log of x minus log of a plus bx. Now in the next step we differentiate both sides with respect to x. So dy by dx would be equal to x into the differential of this expression plus the differential of x into this expression. Now the differential of this expression is 1 by x minus b by a plus bx. So dy by dx is equal to x into 1 by x minus b by a plus bx plus 1 into log x minus log of a plus bx. Now what we do is in the next step we multiply both sides by x. So x times dy by dx is equal to x square into the a by x into a plus bx plus now x into this expression is nothing but equal to y. So this expression becomes y. Thus x times dy by dx is equal to x square into a by x into a plus bx plus y. Now dy by dx is equal to y dash. Let us say that dy by dx is equal to y dash. So we replace dy by dx by y dash to get x times y dash equal to ax by a plus bx plus y. Now again we differentiate both sides with respect to x. So x times y double dash plus y dash equal to we differentiate this with respect to x to get a plus bx into a minus ax into b whole divided by a plus bx whole square plus y dash. Now y dash and y dash gets cancelled and what we get is x times y double dash equal to a square divided by a plus bx whole square. This is because this entire expression reduces to a square. So x times y double dash is equal to a square divided by a plus bx whole square. Now in the next step what we do is we multiply both sides by x square. x cube into y double dash equal to a square into x square divided by a plus bx whole square. Or we can write this as ax by a plus bx whole square. Now this is nothing but equal to x into y dash minus y because we have this equation and when we bring y to this side we get ax by a plus bx. Thus x cube into y double dash is equal to x into y dash minus y whole square. Or we can say that x cube into d square y by dx square is equal to x times dy by dx minus y whole square. And this is the identity which we needed to prove. So students, we see that we have very easily solved this IIT problem using the concepts of higher order derivatives. Now let us see a very important property that is if y is equal to f of x and x is equal to g of y are inverse functions then g double dash y is equal to minus of f double dash x divided by f dash x whole cube. Now this property applies when y equal to fx and x equal to g of y are inverse functions. Now we find many inverse functions like exponential and logarithmic functions are inverse of each other, sin inverse x and sin x are inverse of each other and so on. Now this property that is g double dash y equal to minus of f double dash x by f dash x whole cube can be very effectively used in many objective problems. So let's try to see the proof of this. Let us say that y is equal to fx 
and x is equal to g of y equal to f inverse y. Let us say that these are two inverse functions. Now y is equal to f of x, so dy by dx would be equal to f dash x. And similarly, when we differentiate this with respect to y, we get dx by dy equal to g dash y. Now these two are reciprocal of each other, thus we get f dash x equal to 1 by g dash y. Now this is also a very important property, that is f dash x is equal to 1 by g dash y. From this we get g dash y equal to 1 by f dash x. So differentiating both sides with respect to y, we get g double dash y equal to d by dx of 1 by f dash x into dx by dy. Now dx by dy is nothing but equal to g dash y from this. And so we write g, so we write g dash y in place of this to get g double dash y equal to minus of f dash x by f dash x whole square because when we differentiate 1 by f dash x we get this expression and dx by dy is equal to g dash y. Now g dash y is also equal to 1 by f dash x. Thus if we put the value of g dash y in this expression we get g double dash y equal to minus of f double dash x divided by f dash x whole cube which is the required identity. So we see that if y is equal to fx and x is equal to g of y as two inverse functions then g double dash y is equal to minus of f double dash x divided by f dash x whole cube. So let's now check out how the tool of differentiation helps us to find the sum of series. So let's take an example. Find the sum of series s equal to summation r square into x to the power of r minus 1 and r varies from 1 to infinity. So in this problem we have to find the sum of the series r square into x to the power of r minus 1 where the value of r varies from 1 to infinity. So s is equal to summation r equal to 1 to infinity r square into x to the power of r minus 1. So when we put different values of r from 1 to infinity we get the series as s equal to 1 square plus 2 square into x plus 3 square into x square plus 4 square into x cube and so on. Now we know that 1 by 1 minus x is equal to 1 plus x plus x square plus x cube plus x to the power 4 and so on. And also 1 by 1 minus x whole square is equal to 1 plus 2x plus 3x square plus 4x cube and so on. So we consider the series and what we do is we multiply both sides by x. So on the left hand side we get x by 1 minus x whole square and on the right hand side we get x plus 2x square plus 3x cube plus 4x to the power 4 and so on. Now what we do is we differentiate both sides with respect to x. So we get 1 minus x whole square into 1 minus x into 2 into 1 minus x into minus 1 divided by 1 minus x to the power of 4 equal to 1 plus 2 square into x plus 3 square into x square and so on. Now 1 minus x whole square is 1 plus x square minus 2x plus this expression reduces to 2x minus 2x square. So we see that 2x and 2x gets cancelled and x square minus 2x square is equal to minus x square. So 1 minus x square divided by 1 minus x to the power 4. Also we know that 1 minus x square is equal to 1 minus x into 1 plus x. So we get 1 minus x into 1 plus x divided by 1 minus x to the power 4 equal to 1 plus 2 square into x plus 3 square into x square and so on. Now 1 minus x and 1 minus x from the denominator gets cancelled and what we get is 1 plus x divided by 1 minus x whole cube equal to 1 plus 2 square into x plus 3 square into x square and so on. Thus the value of 1 square plus 2 square into x plus 3 square into x square and so on is equal to 1 plus x divided by 1 minus x whole cube. Thus here in this problem we have used the series expansion for 1 by 1 minus x whole square and then we have differentiated it to get the result for 1 plus 2 square into x plus 3 square into x square and so on up to infinity. Earlier in the chapter on binomial expansion we have seen that the tool of differentiation is used to calculate the value of different series expansions.